morning again. We'll now um, prepare for our regular council meeting. We'll be led in prayer by Madam Clerk, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> Madam Clerk. O oh God of might, wisdom and justice, through whom authority is rightly administered, laws enacted and judgment decreed, assist us, we beseech thee, that this city council may be conducted in righteousness and be eminently useful to thy people over whom we preside. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk. Councilors Williams. Here. Morgan. Present. Jacobs. Present. Mayor Kirkland. Present. Move for approval of minutes. So moved. Second. Are there any questions? Madam Clerk. Councilors Williams? Yes. Morgan? Yes. Jacobs? Yes. Mayor Kirkland? Yes. We are now open up the phone lines and email lines for public comments. If there are any public comments, Mr. Citizen, do you acknowledge those at the, this time? There is, in fact, one email public comment. May I read that, Your Honor? Yes. Our press director, Anya Cleveland, received from Tyrone Groves, 223 Rural Circle, Chester, PA, 19013, um, an email on Wednesday, August 12th, 2020, at 9.42 a.m. Subject was public comment submission for August 12th council meeting. I am here representing the Nova Vista Homeowners Association. We have an issue with parking permits. I've lived here for 16 years and some of the residents that lived here before complained constantly about Crozier people parking in our neighborhood, but they were always ignored. The only reason the city is acting like they care because nobody parks at the, those meters in front of Chester Care. That's why the zone ends at Arbor Drive because they know most people won't walk further than that. We shouldn't be punished because you can't get money from them. We are willing to work with some adjustments because basically you are saying we can't have visitors until after 9 p.m we should have at least have the weekends free. Who wants to keep getting guest passes when we have no idea if one of our relatives or children decide to come by and visit? I, you are trying to use law from the 80s around Widener that shouldn't apply to us because you just put those signs there. One of our members has sent a few letters to the mayor directly with no response, parentheses, not surprised, end parentheses, period. Someone needs to meet with us to come to some sort of solution. I'm sure what's being done can't be legal, especially only making some us get permits and only two people per household. That's stupid, period. Whoever lives at my house should be able to have one. Mm -hmm. um, no further um, email comments, and I have not seen any or heard any calls come through our line, Your Honor. All right. Thank you, Mr. Solicitor. Let me uh, kind of respond to Mr. Groves. Mr. Groves, if you are listening, um, this is not a punish, it's not a punishment to have parking meters in certain areas throughout the city. It is something that is done throughout many municipalities. As a matter of fact, all the municipalities surrounding the city of Chester have uh, parking meters. Secondly, um, I want you to know that whoever the person was that was not I respond to each and every call in a timely fashion. Be more than glad to talk to that individual again if they would be more than glad to, I mean, if they were willing to put in a call today, we'd be more than glad to talk to with them. The parking authority is headed up by Mr. Irwin Lanier. And if you would like to call City Hall 610-447, 7700, we can connect you with Mr. Lanier. He's the director of the parking authority and all your inquiries can go toward to him 
and he should be able to answer any and all inquiries and questions um, concerning the parking in that area. Uh, it always has been a problem with Crozier, a problem that we hope will, hopefully will be able to uh, correct in the near future. Thank you. That it, Mr. Solis? That's it, Your Honor. Madam Clerk? Resolution. The Council of the City of Chester does resolve that it does hereby ratify the action of the Mayor of the City of Chester in the declaration of a weather emergency for the event which occurred on August 4th, 2020 in directing the Emergency Management Coordinator to coordinate and direct all Come on, we want to come here and say something on behalf of Ms. Johnny May. Turn around to that camera. <laughs> <laughs> on behalf of Dr. Kelsey and the family, the Butler family, we do appreciate this honor that was bestowed upon her. Um, she could not be here because she's determined not to leave the restaurant. <laughs> we can never get her to leave the restaurant. Um, so I am here, and she wanted to let everybody know that God bless you and to be safe for your family. Yeah. Before you, we want to take a picture with you before you leave, and then. But before we take the picture, we want to say on behalf of myself and members of council, and they can speak for themselves as well, um, BNC's has been a mainstay here in the community of Chester. Uh, Mr. S Mr. Receiver, uh, you want a good breakfast? The kind of breakfast that'll put you to sleep by lunchtime? <laughs> we gotta get you down to BNC's, <laughs> Ms. Johnny May. So we just want to thank you for your service. And she, what I love about her more than her food is the fact that she, has turned her children and grandchildren into entrepreneurs and uh, she's um, she's a legend in this community and we appreciate all of her service and, and her fine cuisine Thank you. go ahead I know you're gonna talk <laughs> um, and I just sort of piggyback off of what you just said mayor but one of the things I would just want to add something else to it one of the things was when you um, look at the city of Chester and how many black owned businesses there used to be in the city of Chester. Mm -hmm. Those businesses have disappeared. They've, mm -hmm. they've evaporated. She is one of the few, and I don't know of any others that has handed it down to her children. That's one of the problems that we have as black people. I hear people talking about, you know, black people used to own this store but nobody owns it now because the kids didn't want to take it over. They went to college, they went to military, they didn't come back to Chester. That's one of the amazing things about her. The other thing I want to say is that she stabilized that neighborhood. We know uh, the, the traffic, but she's able to, to fuse that with uh, the mayor and council. All of us was down there the other day. We didn't feel like we were going to get stuck up or any of that. Mm -hmm. That has something to do with her. I eat there all the time. That's why I can't. Button is cool. <laughs> so, look out. And, and, and we're getting ready to order some food from down there today. All right? Thank you, Mr. Johnny Mayor. And thank you. Um, I just want to say, of course, thank you and uh, to the entire BNCs and Ms. Johnny May. Um, I haven't been, I'm, I'm not as old to have been able to see how long it's been there. Uh, but I hear a lot of stories from my mother and my father as well as far as uh, going to BNCs and really uh, growing up um, with Ms. J and Ms. Sandy as well. So um, I've been able, over my years, I've really been here with Councilman Jacobs always mentioning about BNCs, been able to go out there uh, numerous amounts of times and it's always love, uh, generous individuals that, that work inside of there. And like you said, when we were down there last week, um, of course, with, uh, with the pandemic, um, not too many people can go inside, but you should have seen as many people that was outside just waiting in the cars that were pulling up, waiting for the food to be completed, you know? And it's, like I said, it's, it's really love and the, the customer service is always lovely. So we appreciate them. Uh, they most certainly, she's most certainly a living legend in our community. So uh, we thank her for all that she has done thus far. You better leave Miss Johnny Mays alone. You too, your suits won't be fitting pretty. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up on it. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to say congratulations and um, the food was very good. I ended up eating it, finishing up my meal on Saturday night. <laughs> but it was, I went in there and I seen your Christmas tree was still up. 
And I was like, oh, they still got their Christmas tree back there. <laughs> Does that mean I can keep my Christmas tree? Yep. <laughs> so, so again, I'd just like to say congratulations. Thank you. She and decorates her tree for every you. holiday. Every season, <laughs> it's going there, it's Easter eggs in it on Easter. You'll have flags in it on Labor yeah. Day and stuff like yeah. that. So trust me, she has a whole slew of things in the basement that we have to change. Uh, <laughs> every holiday. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Before you leave, we're going to take a picture. Yes, This time, we'll open it up for public comments. Um, the phone lines are open, and also emails are accepted as well. Um, while we are, we are waiting, while we're waiting uh, for someone to potentially call in, um, I just wanted to reiterate the City of Chester's business grant program. Um, but thus far, we've had, we have about 10 uh, business applicants uh, for the grant. We've extended it to the end of um, August 14th. We extended it to August 14th uh, for businesses in the city of Chester, uh, small businesses to put in the application. So uh, just make sure you all uh, take advantage uh, of that opportunity if you are, have been hurting or suffering because of uh, COVID um, with um, but not lost revenue, but just struggling to keep up with payroll or to keep your lights or electricity and, and water running within your business, uh, the opportunity are, uh, is here for you all to uh, retrieve, potentially retrieve some, some financial support uh, for COVID-related uh, expenses. So uh, you can go on the City of Chester's website to print, print out the applications and to uh, bring those back into uh, CETA, our Chester Economic Development Authority. And again, the deadline is August 14th, so just don't miss out on that opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. And while we continue to wait, um, I want to personally thank uh, our first responders, our firefighters, and particularly uh, for their response to the storm uh, just last week. Um, a number of our uh, police and firefighting personnel were in the area called Park um, Manor. Park Manor, is it Park Manor? Park Manor. Um, and they provided uh, relief to those persons who are, whose homes were, were flooded. Uh, we appreciate their service and, and their commitment. That was a, a rough time. It seems like every 10 years uh, that, fl that flood comes through here. But I uh, appreciate all the hard work of, of our fi uh, firefighters who were down there. Uh, making sure that the residents were safe. And also appreciate the hard work of our police officers. Uh, there was a crime committed a couple of, a few days ago, um, and it's because of uh, the response from residents that our officers are able to uh, solve these crimes. When people are willing to step up and speak up, um, um, it makes our community a safer place. And so I appreciate all the hard work of our law enforcement personnel who were able to solve uh, these crimes that had happened uh, over the weekend. We appreciate them and um, job well done. And also we'll have some, uh, working with the uh, Stormwater Authority, um, we will have the city and the Stormwater partnered. We will have uh, dumpsters 
on both the west end of the city and the east end of the city, two separate weeks. Um, um, they'll start next week, and so there'll be six dumpsters on the west side next week, or one of the sides <laughs> next week, and then the following week, we'll put six, six dumpsters on the opposite side of the city. We're trying to afford our uh, residents an opportunity to get rid of some of the debris um, that has been um, just mounting up because of the COVID uh, problem that we have throughout our country and beyond. So next week and the following week, those dumpsters will be in place. And we're asking that once we uh, get rid of this debris, discard this debris, we're asking that our residents would just um, do a very simple thing, and that is maybe step outside in front of your own home every now and then. Just take a broom, a rake, a shovel, and sweep up in front of our very own homes. Our goal is to make sure that we take care of our community. It is our responsibility as citizens, as well as government, to keep our community clean. And so that is the request. Mr. Solicitor? Uh, we have received no calls for public comment, no further emails. All right. Any questions or comments from members of council? Not at all. Hearing or seeing none? You said something about BNC's breakfast coming in? <laughs> Is that lunch. what you said? Oh, lunch. <laughs> Hearing or seeing none, this, this meeting is now adjourned. <laughs>